are listening to Daily Insights on the 3ABN Radio Network. And here is your host, Casey Butler. Hello, I am so glad you have joined in on this program today because we will be exploring one of my most favorite topics, and that is the topic of God's personal interest in us and His plan for our lives. And I want to begin by reading a poem. This is a poem by Robert Hare, and it's called Life's Gateway. And it goes like this. You are standing by the gateway of the road that we call life, gazing at its rugged steepness, thinking of its toil and strife. Do not fear the onward journey, though the path may be lost to view. Foot it bravely and with purpose. Plan to see it through. Does the task to you discovered show resistance to your will? Or the burden press more weighty than you thought beneath the hill? Meet each task with manly courage. Lift the burden with a smile. Hope and confidence will help you over the roughest style. God holds something for the future, hidden maybe from your view that will bring unmeasured blessings if life is but sweetly true. Strength apart from heaven is weakness. By his power it stands divine. God has planned, fear not the future, planned your life and mine. What do you think of that? Does God really have a plan for your life? Does God really even care about your life? Do you have any significance at all in his eyes? We are now going to listen to a song called He Knows My Name and it's sung by Shanna Thompson and I think it will give us some answers to this question. I have a maker He formed my heart Before even time Wow, so he knows our name, he knows our every thought, he knows every tear that falls from our eyes. And he hears us when we call to him. That, to me, sounds like a God who is interested in the details of our lives. And you can read more about this in Psalm 139. I recommend you you check that one out when you get a chance. So God takes a very deep interest in our lives. But what about a plan? Does he have a specific plan for our lives? Well, I'd like to share with you a quote, which has become a personal motto of mine. It impacted me so much when I first read it. 
And this is from a book called Christ's Object Lessons from page 327. And it says this, Not more surely is the place prepared for us in the heavenly mansions than is the special place designated on earth where we are to work for God. Now, to me, that statement's pretty clear that God has a very specific plan for our lives. He has a special place where we can work for him. And you know, as I think about Jesus and his life on earth, and Jesus is our example, that was exactly what was the case for him. God had a special plan for him in all the different stages and places that he went in his life. As we seek to follow God ourselves, we will find him leading into specific places where we can live and work for him and represent him. But what if you feel like God can do nothing good with your life? What if you've messed up? What if your life seems like it's hopeless and God could bring nothing good out of it? Well, have a listen carefully to the next song.
is many a man with his life out of tune, battered and scarred with sin. And he's optioned cheap to a thankless world, much like that old violin. But then the master comes in that foolish crowd. They never understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Again he cried, "One, give me one thousand. Who make it two? Only two thousand. Who make it three?" That's a good price now. Who's got a bid for me? And the people cried out, "What made the change? We don't understand." And the auctioneer stopped, and he said with a smile, "It was the touch." Of the master's hand, it was the touch of the master's hand. There you go. So the touch of the master's hand can make all the difference in your life. Thank you to Daryl Sawyer for that song. But there is a burning question that I can hear you asking, and this question is: How do I know what the will of God is? How do I know what His specific plan is for my life? Well, that is a very good question, and it's one that I've asked myself <laughs> many times and tried to find answers. And I can say with confidence that this next song will give you some significant clues in finding that answer. stars at night eagerly they wait for revelations light yet if they only knew that he who has God's word need never be uncertain no endless search and for all that God desires his will for you and me is found within the Bible. We find it written clearly. You desire quietness and meekness of my soul. You desire peaceful thoughts that trust in your control. You desire lowliness that quickly condescends. You desire gentleness and words that help to mend. You want me without ceasing to pray a constant prayer. You want my cheerful giving of my rich bounty share. You want me to be willing my brother's burden bear. This, this is the task fulfilled is all that God desires, all that God would will. His 
you have the show for that song this is the will of god there were many things in that song to take away with respect to god's purpose for our lives but you know the key to them all was right at the beginning of the song where it said that we can find out god's will for us in the bible the bible is full of clues as to what god wants for us in our lives And God is actually looking for people who will live out his will, live out his principles and his way of life to show that he is a true and loving God. I have another poem from Robert Hare that reflects this thought, and it's called The God of the Stars is Counting on You. And it goes like this. He is counting on you, my brother, on you, for the work he has planned, for the prospect in view. And if you should fail him, what will he say when reckoning comes at the end of the day? With crowns, thrones and scepters all cast in review, the God of the stars is counting on you. He is counting on you, my sister, on you. In life, love and promise he bids you be true. And if you should fail him, one star will be dim that might have flashed out in splendour for him. So live for the Saviour in all that you do. The God of the stars is counting on you. What matters if tempests burst over the way? Jehovah still lives and guards while they play. What matters if friendships pass by and are sad? Jehovah still loves and bids you be glad. What matters though all earth's hopes prove untrue? The God of the stars is counting on you. I love that phrase. So live for the Saviour in all that you do. The God of the stars is counting on you. Why should we live for the Saviour? Well, he is currently living for us. And that is the theme of the next song called Because He Lives and it's sung by the West Coast Baptist College. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one.
So the question comes to all of us. Will I live for Christ and do my best to follow his plan, purpose and principles for my life? If that is your desire, tell that to God today. The final song I want to share with you is like a prayer that expresses this desire for God to live out his plan in one's life. It is called My Life is in Your Hands and is sung by the Neblet family. My life is in your hands Oh Lord, I want it to be there My hopes, my dreams and all my plans I trust entirely to your care tuning into Daily Insights. I am your host, Casey Butler, and may God richly bless you as you seek to follow his plan for your life. Bye for now. You've been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.